Okay, so in this part of the lecture, uh, we're continuing with the second part of going concern. Um, so in this part, we're basically talking about a going concern uh, where it's not 100% zero rated, but 80% zero rated, basically. So we're going to basically just give you two uh, different instances from the going concern perspective and from a normal transaction pro like as to try make you aware of what's going on so basically let's take a scenario of saying if we are basically um, are selling um, a business in a normal transaction as sellers this is what happens so let's say the actual selling price of the actual business okay I'm gonna use something else cause seems like we've got a market situation okay. let's say actual selling price Um, is let's say actual selling price is 115 rands right and we're basically selling this item right so what output that would we have to pay is Normally we have to pay 15 because we are selling and the net cash flow that we have as sellers would be 100 bucks. Now we've got the buyer here who would have bought at 115 because the buyer usually follows the seller in terms of cash flow because he pays what the actual seller levy so the buyer would have paid 115 right and how much Input VAT would he have paid? Input VAT, he would have paid 15. Would he have paid 15 in an 80% taxable supply situation? No, you wouldn't have paid 15. Uh, you wouldn't have claimed 15 runs input VAT. How much would you have claimed for input VAT? So for input VAT situations, you would have claimed 15 times 80%. And let's see how much that gives us. Here's our calculator. Our calculator is missing in action. Let's say uh, 15 times 80 percent that gives us 12 right. and so the actual buyer would have in terms of cash flow had to do away with it's 12 so inflow because it does input to him so in terms of outflow he would have done away with 103 right this would have been in a normal uh, normal you know where tax consequences were the same 
Whereas now, we have growing consent. It would have been here. Yes. 115, but because it's a going concern, what kind of output would he have paid? Basically, because it's a going concern, output that actually, because there was no VAT limit, so the actual sale I sold at 100 bucks, because there was no output VAT in this instance, it's a going concern. In terms of output VAT, we would have not had output VAT because it was a zero rated situation. So the net flow for him is that you would have basically paid back 100 bucks that you got as a result of the sales price. And whereas the buyer on the one hand follows what the seller did and the buyer would have basically uh, had to pay 100 bucks because he pays what the seller got levied and in terms of output value, input value, you would not have claimed anything because uh, it's a zero rate, it's, a, it's a zero in terms of it being zero rate supply so in terms of outflow it will be 100 bucks that he basically would have done away with. So do we spot the difference? That's basically what SARS is trying to avoid. So SARS is basically trying to say that's why we need to have an output that adjustment where we are dealing with the going concern of uh, partly taxable supplies where it's mainly t uh, taxable supplies because if we look at it from a from an abnormal VAT consequences and we compare the two situations to each other uh, people that would have transacted in a going concern situation would have been better off than those that would have been transacting on their normal basis of having to account for that. So a lot of people in practice were actually practicing this methodology so as to not be paying the extra three rents so as to, uh, to, to actually not be paying the extra three rents that you would have paid as a result of having done a transaction in the normal sense of having to transact for that where a sale of a business would have been, you know, uh, a concern that we're basically dealing with. Whereas with the going concern because of the zero rating situation arising, the actual buyer would have been better off because you would not have had like a three rents, an additional three rents that you would have lost in this situation. Therefore, SARS basically put in an anti-avoidance for this method to stop being abused by having to now have an output VAT adjustment that we basically have to process in order for us to be in the same situation had it been a normal VAT transaction. In order for us to have been in a normal VAT transaction, SARS has put in an output VAT adjustment that we now have to basically uh, go into in order for us to basically be in the same original position had there's been a normal transaction, so we have to put through an output VAT adjustment, basically. And it comes in the form of a 